everyone, welcome to That's Cakeable. I'm Janine and this week we're going to be working in a slightly different format. The reason for this is that I'm quite unwell and number one, you would not want to see this face on camera. It's not a good look. Number two, I need to stay nice and warm, which my studio is not. But just because I'm sick, I didn't want you guys to miss out on content. So what I did was created a makeshift setup in my lounge room. And this week I'm gonna show you how I created this cute little woodland deer cake topper. I hope you enjoy the video. So for this project, I'm using Saracino's modeling paste. I've taken some of that paste, rolled it into a ball after coloring it a really light ivory, and then rolled it into an oval. I've taken my pinky finger and just made a mark about halfway down that oval. And then with the bottom half, I'm pinching it upwards and making it into almost like a little beak. So it was pinching and pushing. There it is, pop that aside to dry. And now let's move on to the body. So with a larger piece of that modeling paste that I've colored in a really light brown, I've rolled that into a teardrop shape. Now get used to that word because we're gonna be making lots of teardrops. I've elongated one end of the teardrop and just lifting that upwards, which now becomes the little deer's neck. A little bit like a stomach. I just popped that onto a styrofoam block and popped a toothpick through the neck. Now it's time to make some legs. So for the back legs, once again, I'm making a teardrop shape, the same color that I use for the body and elongating that teardrop out. I've just attached it to the back of the deer, sort of making sure that you press it around to the buttocks a little bit, making sure it's rounded out and not too flat. Oh, that would look a little weird. I've pushed the leg in towards the body, like so. Now let's make the front leg, which is really, really similar to the back leg. It's just a bit smaller. Yep, another teardrop and elongated. Push that onto the front side of the deer this time. Once again, rounding it out, making sure it's nice and rounded. And then I'm taking my silicon shaping tool. I'm just going to push in an indent here where the leg bends bend it inwards, cut off the excess, and push it against the back leg. Okay, we're going to make a little tail here. You guessed it, it's another teardrop. Tiny little teardrop shape, and flattened a little bit at the pointed end, and pushed upwards. I'm attaching that to the bottom of the deer with a little bit of water, using my silicon shaper tool to sort of blend it into the body, making sure that it's lifted up. And that's the little tail. Now probably the most challenging part of the deer is to add the little face hood. So I've taken some of that body color again and I've popped it over the face and wrapping it all the way around. Now I'm just trimming off the excess with some scissors. One time, a two time, a three time, look at it. I'm making a mark now where I wanna cut out that hood it ends up looking a little bit like the golden arches, just a giant M. With an X-Acto knife, I then cut around those marks that I've made. Now, I should have added probably a little bit more cornflour underneath the face to stop it sticking. It's a little bit of a challenge as I went to pull it off, but I did get there in the end and just tidied it up with a Dresden tool and with my craft knife. Tidying, cleaning up. And she came good in the end. And there we go. I then go ahead and pop the head on top of the body. Making some little ears and go on, you can say it this time. Yep, it's teardrops. Tiny little teardrops, two tiny little teardrops attached with a bit of water to each side of the head. And then I just took my Dresden tool and pushed inside the ears to make the cavities, I suppose, the openings. Look at her, she's got no idea. No idea, she's got no eyes. Go back to bed, Janine. 
Okay, now I know she's a bit of a doe when they don't have antlers, but hey, it's artistic license, so I made some antlers. I took about a 26 gauge wire, it was quite thin, and I just wrapped some modeling chocolate around that, some dark modeling chocolate. Cut off the excess, and then I just bent it to the shape-ish that I wanted it to go into, or the direction at least. It doesn't matter if they end up a little bit squished, they are antlers, they're not supposed to be perfect. I made two for each side and I made the bends in opposite directions. With some needle nose pliers, I just popped those into her head. I took some extra pieces of modeling chocolate and attached another piece to each side of the antlers just to make them look a little bit more antlerish. Here we go. And I wanted to give her a little flower crown. I found the easiest way to do this was to make just some ribbon roses. So I rolled out some light pink modeling paste into a long snake shape and just flattened it down with a palette knife. I cut off small lengths of the modeling paste and then just rolled it up onto itself. Of course, a little bit fiddly because it's so tiny but definitely doable. I cut off the excess at the end and then basically just pinched down on the bottom to make sure it all stayed together. There we go. To make the leaves, I took a teeny tiny little oval cutter and just cut out ovals from a small piece of green modeling paste. Pinched either end. And that was that. To attach the flower crown, I picked up each piece on my craft knife, I found that the easiest way to do it, and then attached the flowers and leaves sporadically around her head with a little bit of water. For the nose, I just attached a tiny piece of black fondant that I'd rolled into an itty bitty oval with some water. And then I used some pink petal dust just to give her cheeks a little bit of blush. Using my edible art paint, I've just taken a small balling tool or a dotting tool and made some white dots on her back. Now I'm sorry I didn't show you how I did the eyes. I just used an edible marker and drew those eyes in. Took a little bit more of the white paint and painted her little tail. So that's it guys, that's how you make this cute little woodland deer cake topper. I hope to be back in action really, really soon, firing on all cylinders. If you're feeling well, and there's no excuses, you know what to do? Go and get your cake on. I'll see you next time guys, bye.